Hey guys, this is Chef Phil. So today is a nice cloudy rainy day. Um, it's Saturday. So I decided to make another cooking video for my baking and pastry students. They haven't been able to watch me do anything pastry related yet. So um, I was looking at my grandmother's recipe box. Uh, my grandmother passed away a few years ago and I was very close to both of my grandparents. Uh, my grandmother Marion on my dad's side was um, a great cook. So my grandmother, people still love her cooking. Um, I remember as a kid, I was fortunate enough that she lived just down the street from me. I would go over there um, every day, multiple times a day. And um, one thing she always made was bread pudding. So I was digging through her recipe box and I found her bread pudding recipe and I decided, why not? We have lots of bread. I need to do something for my baking and pastry students, which I miss. So I decided to, uh, to find one of her recipes and make her bread pudding. Um, when I was reading it though, it was very basic, kind of like most old recipes are. So I decided to put my own little modern twist on it. I added some apples, some pears, some coconut sugar instead of granulated sugar, some maple syrup, some nutmeg, um, heavy cream instead of just milk, uh, vanilla bean paste. And I kind of made up my own version of a pear and apple caramel bread pudding with fresh nutmeg. So I hope you guys like it. Um, I'm gonna go into the video here in a minute and show you how to do it. And then we'll compare the two recipes. Thanks. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my cup of whole milk. I'm gonna measure out my heavy cream. And you can see all the fat that comes off the top of the cream. That's what we want. That's really, uh, that's gonna add a lot to it. Now the recipe calls for a cup and a quarter. I'm only using one cup at this point. We're gonna use the other quarter cup later um, with our apples, okay? So in here I have my milk, I have my heavy cream. I have a big clump of the milk fat from the uh, heavy cream, which is good. We're gonna add our brown sugar. We're gonna add our salt. And I'm gonna add our butter. This is all gonna go on the stove and we're gonna bring it to a simmer. We have a mixture on the stove now. I did neglect to tell you that the recipe does call for white sugar. I've been trying to use coconut sugar and other forms of natural sugar as opposed to refined or granulated white sugar. So in this recipe, we're actually using brown sugar and coconut palm sugar. See all those nice little bubbles coming into the pan? That's when you know the milk and cream mixture is ready. I'm gonna crack my egg. It's always good to crack it into a bowl first. That way you don't get any shell into your egg mixture. So that's my third whole egg. And now we're just gonna do an egg yolk. We have one in there already. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between the shells to separate the egg white from the egg yolk. So in my bowl, I have three whole eggs and two egg yolks. One nice little trick is if you crack your egg and you get a piece of shell into your bowl, you can use the shell itself to scoop the piece of shell out of the mixture because the calcium that makes up the shell, the calciums come together almost like magnets when you go to pick them up. Um, as opposed to your finger where the shell just runs away from you. So that's just a nice little tip. Now we're gonna take just our eggs and our egg yolks and we're gonna whisk it. I'm using my little baby whisk here. Um, I can't seem to find my big whisk this morning, so we're just improvising to make it work. All I wanna do here is just scramble my eggs up. And again, this is a twist on a bread pudding that was my, my grandmother's recipe and I'm just kind of adding my own little spin and twist onto it. So now we're... So we neglected to film the section where you take the warm milk and cream mixture and you slowly whisk it into the egg yolk mixture so you don't cook or scramble the egg yolks to form your custard. This is also where I took a little bit of bourbon and some of the vanilla bean paste and a little pure maple syrup and I mixed it all in with the custard just to add a little extra flavor to the bread pudding. So we have our bread, I've just taken it and I've just kind of ripped it off. These were some leftover dinner rolls. Because of this whole COVID-19, we've been ordering carry out like lots of other people and we've been trying not to eat bread in our house. So every time they give us dinner rolls, we just save them and I figured why not make bread pudding? So this is the custard we made earlier. I've torn up all my dinner rolls and I'm just going to pour the custard over the bread. 
and then I'm just going to mix it up and let it sit here. We want the bread to start to absorb all that yummy goodness, all the custard, the cream, the milk, the eggs, the sugar, the vanilla, the bourbon. And we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes. This is gonna sit for probably about five minutes while the apples and pears are sauteing. And then we'll come back and put the whole thing together. This bread pudding really only takes about 45 minutes start to finish. The longest portion of it is gonna be cooking in the oven. Now we're gonna cut our apples and our pears. So I like to just cut the sides off of mine. And because this is a rustic bread pudding, I have my core here. Because it's a rustic bread pudding, I'm leaving the skin on because I think it helps add to that rustic nature. Plus you have a lot of nutrients in the skin. These have all been washed. If I was doing this as a French, you know, finer dessert, I would peel them. Um, but for this case, it's fine. I'm just doing a rough chop on my apples and my pears. So I have one Granny Smith apple and I have two pears. Okay, so now I'm gonna saute the apples and the pears. So I'm going to take the rest of my butter. I'm gonna let that melt into my pan. And as it starts to melt, I prefer using Irish butter when I cook. And when I'm baking, I particularly like salted butter for sauteing and unsalted for my doughs. I'm gonna add all my chopped apples and pears. All right, so now our apples and our pears, you can see they're starting to cook. They've been cooking maybe about three or four minutes now. They're starting to get that look to them where they're starting to soften up. I'm gonna add that remaining quarter cup of brown sugar that we set aside from the original start of the recipe. And with the butter that's in here with the apples and the pears, this brown sugar is going to help caramelize and we're gonna almost make like a little pan caramel sauce with the, um, with the apples and the pears. Now I don't want this to be too mushy, so I still want the apples and pears to have a little bit of a bite to them. So I made sure that these weren't too ripe when I started. I'm gonna take some nutmeg and I'm going to grate some fresh nutmeg. Nutmeg's one of those things that's always better when it's fresh. And this recipe has no cinnamon in it. We're just gonna have the nutmeg in it in place. And I'm just eyeballing this. I would say it's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm gonna add a little bit of pure maple syrup. Mix that around. and then just a little splash of our bourbon. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of heavy cream. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. And we're just gonna let this simmer for about a minute. We're gonna let it come together. I want some of this stuff to reduce down. It may take a, you know three or four minutes total. Um, again, I don't want the apples and pears to get too mushy, but I would like for this to come together in a nice little caramel sauce. We are then going to strain the sauce from the apples and pears. And we're gonna add just the pears and apples to the bread pudding, saving the sauce aside that we can then use as a caramel sauce to serve with the bread pudding when it comes out of the oven. So we have our bread, I've just taken it and I've just kind of ripped it off. These are some leftover dinner rolls. Because of this whole COVID-19, we've been ordering carry out like lots of other people and we've been trying not to eat bread in our house. So every time they give us dinner rolls, we just save them and I figured why not make bread pudding? So this is the custard we made earlier. I've torn up all my dinner rolls and I'm just going to pour the custard over the bread. And then I'm just going to mix it up and let it sit here. We want the bread to start to absorb all that yummy goodness, all the custard, the cream, the milk, the eggs, the sugar, the vanilla, the bourbon. And we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes. This is gonna sit for probably about five minutes while the apples and pears are sauteing. And then we'll come back and put the whole thing together. This bread pudding really only takes about 45 minutes start to finish. The longest portion of it is gonna be cooking in the oven. 
All right, so now we have our apple and pear mixture. I'm using a slotted spoon, and I'm just going to put the apples and pears in with the bread. Again, we don't really want this caramel sauce that we just created. We're gonna save this, and we're gonna pour this over our bread pudding when it comes out of the oven. This is a great little bread pudding because it saves on a lot of dishes, and you end up with a delicious bread pudding and a sauce all at the same time. Now to the sauce, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of my vanilla bean paste, and then I'll set this aside for when we're finished with the bread pudding. Now that we have our mixture mixed together, I'm just gonna gently fold this together to incorporate the apples and the pears in with the bread. And then I am going to pour this into my buttered casserole pan. All the eggs that are in here are gonna to help to souffle a little bit when it bakes in the oven. And just in case it bubbles over at all, I have it sitting on a cookie sheet just to help keep the oven nice and clean. This will go in the oven now at about 375 degrees for probably about 35 to 40 minutes. All right guys, so the bread pudding is out of the oven now. You can see it's nice and golden brown on top. If you touch it, it's still, it bounces back. When you touch it, it springs back, which is what you want it to do. We don't want it overcooked because we still want it nice and creamy inside. So that is our bread pudding. Now we're gonna get ready and plate it up and um, give it a try. Hey guys, so I decided to make some whipped cream while the uh, bread pudding was in the oven. So my students are always asking me, chef, why don't you go on TV and compete in one of the TV shows? And I always say, because I don't have time for that and life is too busy and, Today I kind of got a feeling for what it's really like because I had to make whipped cream with a baby whisk. Check it out. So this is what I had to use to make a bowl of whipped cream. I made it, but it was challenging. And this is our finished product, a take on my grandmother Marion's classic bread pudding with a new modern twist. I hope you enjoyed today as much as I enjoyed making this video for you.